I recently had an opportunity to test out two lights on a two-week camping trip, the Claris CL2 and the Claris CL3. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on these two lights, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just want to thank Claris for sending out these two lights so that I could share them with you. So yeah, Gina and I went for our annual camping trip at Kujbequak National Park in New Brunswick, and it was a two-week trip. And we had opportunity to use both of these lights for the full two weeks because we have both a tent and a screen house. I was able to use one of them in the tent and the other in the screen house. So what I thought I would do is just take you down to the tabletop, go over both of these lights, quickly and then I'll talk about my experiences using them. All right, so the first of the two lights we'll look at is the Claris CL2. And this one we used in our screen house for the uh, two weeks that we were camping. I'll explain why it's so well suited for doing that. But before we look at the light in any detail, let me just share you with you what it came with. This is the box the light came in. In addition to that, it did come in this nice little carry sack. Actually, it's come in handy for uh, keeping a few of the things together and for storage. A manual with warranty information. Two more items. Let me just reach over and get it. A small carabiner, which did actually, in fact, come in handy in hanging this up inside of the screen house. A USB Type-C charging cable with another little adapter on it for Apple products. And that's used because the power bank or the light itself can be used as a power bank for charging other items. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. So let's bring the light back in. The other thing that it has with it is it actually is, has four 18650 batteries built into it. And you can feel the weight of those four batteries. They contribute to the long run times on this flashlight. The only downside to that is they're not accessible. You can't replace them. So that, that's a bit of a con, I understand, for a lot of people. Now, let's just go over some of the key features of this. One of the things I mentioned is the fact that it is a power bank. So let me show you that now. So enter this port is the charging port which is USB type C and a USB type A output port right there. Uh, the other thing is that it well it's actually a, a flashlight as well as an area light and uh, I'll get into the operation how that works on top of it. Now here's the the cool thing and why it works so well in our screen house. It, these light portions up here are actually fold down arms and they have little click adjustments so you can adjust them to any degree that you want for area light so they work pretty good I mean you could use this on your table your picnic table or wherever to provide just a specific amount of light in, in an area so maybe two down two up whatever combination you want for that of course heavy duty silicone uh, hanging loop. I wondered if this was gonna be durable enough for uh, use and you know, it is heavy duty. I don't know if it'll last for a long, long time, but it certainly did last the two weeks. I expect there's no reason why it won't last if it's not exposed to the sun. It's not gonna get uh, sun damaged over time. And this is where that little carabiner came in handy because I could hang it from a little loop inside of the tent. Another nice feature is the fact that this has a quarter inch 20 thread adapter on the bottom. And of course that is actually come, come, came in kind of handy for me when I was camping because I could use this for filming or creating video because this can be mounted on top of any tripod, even a small tripod if you wanted to use it on your table and cast your light upwards. But for me, I was able to mount it on a tripod that I could cast the light forward and create an area light for filming with. So that actually did come in kind of, ha of uh, handy at that. And the last feature to mention, of course, is that it does come with a one year warranty. So let me just fold those back up. Let's get into the specifications. All this information, of course, will be in the video description below for your reference. The weight, it is a bit heavy and at 402 grams, and I'll put the imperial measurements on the screen as we go. Uh, and that, of course, is due directly to the fact that it has that four 18650 batteries. Overall length, 8.74 inches. It has a width, you can call it a diameter, but since this is more or less square, width is probably the better way to explain it. 2.2 inches. It is waterproof to an IPX5 rating. So yeah, you could leave this out on the picnic table and not be concerned about it being ruined. And it has an impact rating of one meter. I was a little surprised to see that. I didn't test it um, because it's basically a plastic construction. So a one meter 
impact resistance to drop this on the ground, I was pretty sure it would break. But again, I didn't drop it or I didn't do it intentionally. I actually did drop it off of the picnic table one evening. It did not break, uh, actually no damage whatsoever, not even a mark on it. But uh, you know, I didn't test it to see just how durable it would be for drops. All right, let's get into the performance specifications. Now, as far as performance for this goes, there is, a, as I mentioned, a flashlight on the end and that flashlight will operate at 100 lumens lasting for 18 hours. So it's a very basic flashlight. Uh, useful? Uh, maybe, maybe not. I, I didn't find it. I didn't use it as a flashlight. It's kind of big and heavy. I had other flashlights that I would use, but I was more interested in the fact that what it would do as far as the lamp goes. So it actually has three settings for lamp, a low run at 30 lumens running for 60 hours, a medium of 150 lumens lasting for 12 hours, and a high of 750 lumens lasting for four hours, 45 minutes. And to be honest, I don't think I used it on high all that much at all because inside of the screen house when it was dark and you need it light for whatever you're you know cooking and that type of thing um yes i used it for high on high for a few minutes but for the most part all i needed was medium so i got longer run times with it that way it does have a fa flashing red mode which i'll demonstrate and it does have an sos mode rated at 100 lumens all right so the basic function of this light is an area light as i mentioned so that's where we'll start the function i'll get on to the flashlight uh, towards the end of this. So to turn it on, it's just a simple press of the on off button. It comes on in low. If I press it again, it goes up to medium. I know the camera is adjusting to the light. If I press it again, well, uh, sorry, I'll explain why that happened in a minute. Let's start again. On, medium, high, and high white. Now, the, yes, there is a high yellow and a high white. If you wait a few seconds between pressing the button, then you can just turn it off. And so that's the reason it turned off a second ago. So you don't have to cycle through low, medium, high, high white uh, each time. You just have to leave it for a second and uh, then you can turn it off directly from whatever lumen setting that is. So once again, let's do that. I know the camera is gonna compensate and that's an indication of just how bright this is. On low, medium, high, high, white, and then off again. Now, if I want to access the flashlight, it's a long press of the on-off button. And now with the uh, flashlight on, I can get this to flash red by just giving a quick push. Oh, sorry, did it wrong again. Now, there's a reason why that. So it's on. And that's what you have to do. You have to, while it's on, quickly press the button again, and you can get to this nice red flashing light. Now, if I want to get to the SOS, I'll turn it off. Long press to turn it on. And press twice, and you get the SOS function on the flashlight. I'm not quite sure why it was done like that instead of on the main light, but that's the way it is. All right, let's turn it off again. So uh, there is, where's the LED, uh, or not the LED, sorry, the panel itself. This is, again, where the port is for getting open. If I can get it open with no thumbnails. There we go. So there is the port for charging and discharging the light, but also that there's four LEDs in there to give you charge status, 25% each, of course. All right, so the other lamp that Claire sent me is the CL3, and this is the one that we used in our tent. It just seemed to be the right place to use it as opposed to the other one, more because it gives a total area light, not so focused, so it lit up the whole tent just nicely. So before I show you to, uh, more detail on this light, I'll show you what else it came with. Manual with warranty information, as you would expect, and a USB Type C charging cable and the box it arrived in. All right, let's get back to the lamp. Now, the one more thing that did come with the light is a single 2600 milliamp hour 18650 battery installed, so it's non-accessible. And I know that's not a feature people appreciate nowadays, but that's what you get with this lamp. You cannot get at the battery. Now, the key features for this, which are kind of cool, and there's a few of them. One is that it has a built-in carabiner, nice little carabiner. This worked well inside the tent because we have a loop at the top of our tent for hanging it from, so it worked out well. 
but it does also have a magnet right here. Now, here's my experience with the magnet. I tried a few things. If it's directly overhead, it'll hold on to something like this. If it's a pole, especially with its rounded surface, you're not going to get a whole lot of contact area. So it didn't hold on very well when I test it with that. So you just want to test out what, what surfaces this magnet will work for you. Uh, it's not especially strong, but it worked on a surface hanging straight down just well enough for me. It does also have though, and again, this is something else you can make use of, is the quarter inch 20 thread uh, mount on the bottom. So again, you can put this on a tripod. Now, I wouldn't use this necessarily as a light for recording video, but there's no reason why you couldn't put this on your picnic table or wherever and use it as a light that's mounted for just area work right around your area, because it does provide quite a bit of light, as you'll see in a minute. And the last thing is it does come with a one-year warranty like the CL2 does. Now, let's get into the physical specifications for it. Again, I'll put all this information in the video description below. The weight for this one comes in at 201.5 grams. The height, top to bottom, 161.1 millimeters. Diameter at its widest, 83.9 millimeters. It also has an IPX5 waterproof rating and an impact rating of one meter. And when I looked at this, again, I didn't test this to see if it would stand up to it, but I could see part of that is built by this cage. It's not going to likely impact the globe itself. And the top part does seem to be a little bit sturdier plastic. So yeah, I can see this certainly lasting a one meter drop, uh, at least for a few times. It's not something I would want to test out just in case. All right, let's get into the performance specifications and operation for the light. All right, performance specifications. Uh, kind of an interesting flashlight in that it actually starts out, as you'll see in a minute, at its lowest with an orange light. It's, it's not a uh, especially bright light, but maybe it's more of a mood. It did provide enough light inside of the tent for moving around and uh, seeing what you needed to see without losing your night vision. So maybe that's the reason. It's kind of like a red light is on a small headlamp. 50 lumens though. It's kind of bright, but uh, again, inside of our a large tent, it wasn't overly bright. 50 lumens lasting 13 hours. Now you move up to the warm light on low, which is 110 lumens for 10 hours and a warm or white light at high for 280 lumens for five hours. It does also have a breathing light. Now the breathing light is kind of interesting. The idea of the breathing light is, is that, well, let me demonstrate it and I'll, you'll understand why. All right, there's one more performance spec that I didn't mention, or actually more of a key feature that I didn't mention that I'll do so now before I show you the operation. And the fact is, is that the USB type C input port right here. And by the way, that is the battery status LED. I can show you that in operation in a moment. But the USB type C input port can also be used as an output port. So if you have a double ended USB type C cable, you can use this to charge another device at the same time. Right, let me just close that up. All right. As far as uh, the cycling through the lights, and that's what you have to do. You can have to cycle through the lights, at least when you first turn it on. If you leave it on at any one of the settings for longer than 30 seconds, you can hit it directly uh, to off or turn it directly to off without having to cycle through the rest of the lights. So everything is operated from the one button. I turn it on. Uh, yeah, it's not showing up on the camera the way it is in front of me, but this is a warm orangey yellowish light. It looks more yellow in the viewfinder I can see. By the way, there is the uh, the status indicator for your power. Uh, yeah, so that's the orange light. Now, if I hit it again, it will come up with the warm light. If I hit it again, it comes up with the high white light. And if I hit it again, it comes up with this feature known as a breathing light. And I, I guess it's more of an aesthetic thing. As you can see, it just go. it's the orange light again and it just dims and brightens and dims and brightens. Uh, neat thing about this, I guess, is it turns itself off after 20 minutes. So yeah, maybe, you know, a bit of an aesthetic thing, something that you can play with. You may or may not like it, may or may not use it. Honestly, I didn't use it, but it's kind of cool that it's there if it's something you think you might like. I'm thinking where I might use something like this is mounted on the tripod outside at the picnic table, 
just for an aesthetic reason. I don't see it as something functional inside of my tent at all. All right, so it's about nine o'clock in the evening here, and I just wanted to give you a demonstration of the Claris CL3. So I'm going to approach our tent. You can see we have a big white tarp sitting over top, and that is reflecting an awful lot of light. So it looks lighter than it actually is here. Now inside the tent, I have the door open, and we'll just take a look around inside. My cot, Gina's cot, and there is the lamp at the top. And you can see I do have it on the medium setting that there's more than enough light in here. In fact, we don't usually use the light at that high a setting. We use it at the low orangey reddish glow because that's all we really need to get ready inside of the tent here. But it works perfectly for this purpose, and we've been using it now for two weeks. All right, so we're at our campsite here in Kujbaquak National Park, and you can see we have the tent set up under a big white tarp over there. Gina enjoying her evening reading. And there is our kitchen, screen tent, whatever you want to call it, with also with a tarp on it, and our fire going, of course. So I have the Claris CL2 set up inside, just to give you an idea how much light is in here. Now you can't see much looking at the light itself, but just to give you an idea, it's actually more of a white light than what it seems to be in the viewfinder here, but you can see you can prepare meals and do whatever you need to do here with that much light. That is the medium settings, just to save a little bit of battery, but still more than enough light. All right, let's wrap this video with a few closing comments of each of the lights, starting with the Claris CL2. So my first thought is, or my first comment is, it's a bit of a bigger light with considerable amount of weight because, of course, it does have the four 18650 batteries in it. That weight is actually a benefit in this case because you get some really good long run times. I guess what I would say about it, it's not a backpacking light at all, unless you think that you're going to be using this for recording video. Then you may actually want to take it as a backpacking light, not us. We're going to be using this for camping in our tent or the screen house. As I mentioned, it worked really well on the screen house because, of course, I could direct this down over my work area and give me some very good light for meal prep or whatever else I was doing inside of our screen house. Do you know one of the things that I wasn't quite so sure about was this uh, silicone hanging loop here? Um, Again, it's worked out just fine. If I'll watch it over time, if I think it's, it starts to get a little shabby and is going to break off, I can replace it with something else. The quarter inch 20 thread on the bottom gives it a little bit of extra use. Probably the one feature of the light that I'll use the least is the flashlight on the bottom because I'm sh for sure going to be carrying another flashlight with considerable more power. However, I did use the power bank a few times to charge my flashlights and uh, well, actually not my flashlight, but my wife's headlamp is what I charged with it. Uh, it had an especially short run time for whatever reason. I won't even mention which one it is, but it came in handy in the evening for when we were reading to be able to charge her light back up or run the, a cable to it while she was reading with it. So yeah, the, not a bad light at all, just a bit big, just a bit heavy, but as I mentioned, did come in handy for some nighttime recording. Now, as far as the CL3 goes, this actually, it's got a nice old school look. You know, it kind of looks like a lamp, an industrial lamp that you might see in, in a warehouse or something with a bit of a protective cover on it. And that is a protective cover. So it's a, it is a metal wire around the outside. That's probably what aids in its uh, one meter drop protection. But this was ideal for inside of the tent. It illuminate the, the whole tent, even on the low yellow light. Not No, not the yellow orange one, but the warm light. That's the one we use most often. We didn't even feel the need to use this on high uh, because uh, it's not something we were reading by. We were reading using headlamps. So, yeah, I, one thing I would say about this that I wasn't too sure of, and I'm, and I'm, not, and I'm going to suggest that you be careful with it, is that magnet. Again, it worked fine. If it was like this on a surface, but as soon as you tilted it, it didn't stay on very well. So I'll just point that out to you as well. Okay, two nice lights, both worth looking at for camping, neither of which are backpacking, certainly not ultra lights, but reasonable if you're car camping. I guess you could use them around the house as well if you felt if you had a need for a battery-driven light. 
That's all I have for you. I will put all the specifications and other information, including the links to where you can have another look at these lights in the video description below. I would invite you, if you have any comments or questions for these lights, put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.